So if you don't know me, I am Alicia Gibb or Alicia Seidel, depending on when you met me in life. Um, and then, you know, I had an identity crisis over what my new last name was. So um, how many of you, just curious, have been coming here for the last like 10 years? Ah, there's hands in the audience. How about like the last five years? Like, like, like let's say, how many people came here like to a summit pre-pandemic? Okay, nice. How about post-pandemic? How many people is, of this is their first summit? Awesome! Welcome! That is extremely awesome. So yes, welcome uh, to the Open Hardware Summit, of course. Um, welcome to what Oshawa does. So yeah, we say Oshawa. It's the Open Source Hardware Association, but that's a mouthful every time you have to say it. Um, and I am so glad that you all are here as part of the open source hardware community. So I wanted to celebrate you all um, a little bit and talk about um, why it's so important that you're all here. So first of all, thank you. Um, your donations, um, your even just buying a ticket for this event, uh, all of our sponsors upstairs and in here, um, our speakers, right? Just donating your thoughts, donating your time. All of you make this possible. Without your thoughts and time and input, we wouldn't really be here talking about anything. Um, so huge thank you to our members and our donors as well. You all make this possible. We are a small nonprofit based all over the world and we're trying to do our best, but it's really tricky with a staff of technically one and then a handful of contractors. So I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but I wanted to give our sponsors just a bit of a shout out. So um, DIA is our uh, visionary sponsor. DIA tackles fundamental societal and economic development problems caused by insufficient markets, ineffective governance, and instability. Thank you, D sorry, DAI. <laughs> um, make. Make celebrates your right to tweak, hack, and bend any technology to your will. Thank you, Make. DigiKey, thank you, DigiKey. They have parts for every project. Thank you, Haishu Peng. Haishu was one of our mentors for our um, Open Hardware Creators and Academia program, and Haishu made a personal donation for the Summit Fellows program. Thank you to BeagleBoard, our lanyard sponsor. Thank you all for wearing these lovely lanyards that BeagleBoard sponsored. Um, BeagleBoard, they are making computers open again. Thank you to Cyber City Circuits uh, for our badges. Um, Cyber City Circuits, rapid prototyping, PCB design, and assembly service services for small business. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention all the other sponsors who are on the slide. It's amazing. Um, it's really great to be part of a community that so many people want to uplift with financial donations to make this event happen. So thank you very much to all of our sponsors at every level. Um, every single level is very, very important to us. Um, we appreciate it and it really helps our bottom line. And um, lastly, uh, we ended up getting a grant this year as well for our summit fellows. So those are people who wouldn't normally be able to travel here um, that are being granted some funding to be able to travel. Um, so the AVNET CARES grant is a philanthropic program focused in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, as we sometimes say. Um, diversity, the environment, and supporting communities in crisis. Oshawa received a grant through the Community CARES um, program for our summit fellows, so thank you, AVNET CARES. And to our wonderful leaders, give it up for Lee and Sid. We could like clap all night for them, and I feel like it still wouldn't be enough. <laughs> Lee and Sid have both given copious amounts of time and energy to making this all work. So if you had, who here had just a little bit of fun today? Just a little bit. Okay, okay, all right. Who here had a lot of fun today? That's right. <laughs> So, whether you had a little bit of fun or a lot of fun, please let Lee and Sid know how their efforts really paid off and made it happen for you all. 
So a huge thank you to Lee and Sid. Um, all right. Next up, we've got some upcoming community events that we want to share. These aren't necessarily our events. These are events that like, we found, for example, on the internet. You may have heard of it before. Um, and we just wanted to highlight a few things that were going on in the sphere of open source hardware. Um, so the, the first one is um, OSPOs. So I think like a year ago, this acronym was not around. Maybe it was two years ago. OSPO is Open Source Program Office. And this is exciting because these open source program offices are starting to take over in universities alongside tech transfer offices. So instead of like getting a patent, now there might be another route, as well in institutions. Um, so the United Nations is hosting an OSPOs for Good um, in July in 2024. I guess that's this year, right? Um, there's also, on the other side of the pond, um, over in Germany, there is the Open Source Hardware Conference uh, September and October, if you happen to be in Germany or if you are watching from Germany on our live stream. And Open Hardware Month is October. And so in during Open Hardware Month, um, this is an Oshawa affiliated uh, program here. We try to get a number of events happening locally in different places. Um, and so if you happen to be interested in hosting one of those events, we will put it out to the open hardware world that your event is happening. So October as Open Hardware Month, we also um, really try to get people about uh, excited about certifying and documenting their hardware during October. So that is coming up as well. Uh, next up, open source hardware news. What have we been doing in the news lately? Um, so, uh, we created, if, if you were at our summit last year, we talked a lot about the Open Hardware Creators and Academia program, which was happening at that point in time. Um, that program ended this November, and we are looking at what the new program is going to look like. Um, but we have a number of really great documents that have come out of that program. So Open Hardware, uh, Guidelines for Open Hardware, Tutoring, uh, Mentoring and Training, guide in academia for open hardware, different open hardware case studies in cultural institutions and art museums. Um, Carlotta Berry was our keynote last year, and I just kind of stuck her keynote up there, but really it's because Carlotta created so much content, I couldn't really like pick one thing. Um, and then as a group, the group of academics all created this enabling practices um, for creating open hardware in academia, meaning like where is all that red tape that you have to cut through when your, TT or when your tech transfer office says, no, you should get a patent on that and you wanna make open hardware. Um, so that was our very first inaugural group. Um, we worked out a bunch of kinks and we are um, looking forward to doing it again in the future. Um, CERN, again, see there's that acronym up there, CERN launched an OSPO, an open source program office. So CERN, like, like you know, Big Hadron Collider CERN, like the one in Switzerland CERN, that's CERN, right? Um, so they launched an OSPO, which I'm super excited about because again, this just goes further towards tech transfer offices not only having one option of a patent, but now having also an option of open source hardware. Um, and I think it's really interesting. This was one of our first summits that happened at the New York Science Museum in 2011. And that was Miriam from CERN. And she was one of the lawyers who wrote one of the first open hardware licenses. So even when they had their, their office is called Knowledge Transfer, right? But even when they had an office that was mostly dealt with legal um, and patents, um, they recognized that open hardware was so important that they needed to have a license for it. And then, um, fast forward 10 years, and Javier, who is one of our board members, gave a talk um, 2020 about the last 10 years of open hardware at CERN. So I just really love like their lineage with us because they were kind of there when we started and they're still there and still dedicated as we are. So it's just like really, really fantastic. Um, and such a huge name in open hardware. So they have an OSPO now, yay CERN. Okay, um, we also have the uh, monthly certification posts in Make Magazine, and so if you go to uh, Make, you can view each month our different certification posts. We usually pick three 
things that were certified that month, and we write a little bit about those things. Um, and if you don't know what the certification is, you can go to certification.oshawa.org um, and find out what our certification is, including this little question, should I certify my project? And the answer is probably, yes, of course you should. You're sitting here. You believe in open hardware, so certify it. Um, because one of the other things that we have been working on um, so we did, we participated in a policy sprint for open source scientific hardware through the Federation of American Scientists. And while this was um, Americans doing their thing in the American government, I think it's also really important for people enthused about open hardware to do the same things in their country's government. Um, and however you get involved in the US, it's policy sprints and here it may be something different. but four of us basically wrote different policies for our government to build capacity for open source hardware within the government, to make government funding um, post projects as open hardware as a necessity, and finally the one that I did was so that our patent and trade office would start searching our certification database as a mechanism to look for prior art so that open source hardware stays open source and it doesn't accidentally get patented over by our governments. Um, and there was a case where this happened recently and it was kind of like the first case where our, the American government patented it over open source hardware. And the exciting part was the person fought it. They said, wait, I had prior art, it's right here, and they won. And so that really tells us that open source is a real thing that our governments will actually obey and will recognize um, when they have incorrectly given a patent. So that was great news, but we want to take it one step further and we want them to start searching for, um, for our databases for that certified stuff um, that it does create a database when you get your certification, um, meaning that your prior art will be found. All right, finally, I want to talk about ways to engage with Oshawa. So you're all here, you're all engaging, way to go. Everybody gets a gold star today. Um, but just to let you know, in case, we, in case you didn't realize that we were out here in some other spaces, um, you can connect with us on our various social medias, and I'm sure we will, I will forget one of them, but we are on things like Twitter. But then you know some weird things happen to Twitter, so we kind of realized that maybe community people were like starting to go other places, and that was okay. And we kind of want to go other places too. So we're on Mastodon now, and we're on Instagram now and we're on LinkedIn and we have a discord and like really kind of expanded the network there um, We also uh, set up a hackster community hub so you can join our hackster Community hub if you go to like hackster.io and you like search for open source hardware association We will pop up um, You can always certify your hardware as a way of engagement participate in Open Hardware Month. You can become a member. Members get to vote in our board members and who's on our board making our decisions. Um, or you can also make a financial donation which really helps us out. And I just wanna bring up one person from the audience who has given um, not only her time as a board member, but also um, as a board member, understands that a huge part of board membership is fundraising. And so she's been crucial to getting a number of corporate sponsorships for us, um, but she's also contributed financially to uh, herself with her personal money. So Kat, Scott, I want you to come on up. I want you to tell people why it is you donate. So who here has given money to like the EFF before? Public radio, other nonprofit organizations. So running, We've been doing this for what, 12 years, 10 years, 13 years, something like that. We've been crawling, walking, running. We're really starting at that walking, running phase and it's kind of critical at this juncture that the organization starts raising money. Uh, we currently have barely one full-time employee. We'd like to expand that and the opportunities that we can go for, a lot of, one thing to be aware of when you're running a run nonprofit is the way things work out is you get donor money you can also go up for larger grants, but those grants often have to be matched by your donation base. So it's really incredibly important that we start getting the community involved in sending money to Oshawa so we can start funding things like more of these position papers, more of this political advocacy, building things like the certification website. So I've been trying to do a lot of that. Uh, 
have a couple of the other board members are working that direction. We really have never pushed that hard for anyone to join Auschwitz. Been, oh, yeah, go do your thing. That's great, wonderful. Uh, but it would be really great to start having more people who work on open source hardware help support the infrastructure and the legal infrastructure that makes these things possible. And so that's, that's a quick push. Uh, you can go to oshawa.org slash donate. Another thing to keep in mind is if your organization, your university, the nonprofit you work at, the company you work at, uh, some community group, your hackerspace would like to donate and donate at a larger level, we're always happy to come and talk to us and we can work something out. So that's the quick pitch. I know it's getting late in the day. Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, well, yes. Give it up for Kat. Thank you so much, Kat. The link that Kat mentioned, uh, there's two ways, right? So there's the membership link there, there's a donate link there. But yeah, imagine, like a lot of people, when, I, when they realize that Asha is basically a one person and two part-time consultant team, a lot of people are like, oh, you're that small. Like one of our biggest secrets, don't tell anybody. This isn't like being live streamed, right? Okay, so one of our biggest secrets is that we're like really small. And when people find out how small we are, what I want to tell them is like, imagine if there were two people. <laughs> but also, by the way, our volunteer board does an amazing job as well and absolutely commits their time. So I mentioned a bunch of things in my talk. This is your moment to take a picture of all the links that I mentioned, the conferences that were um, that were there that I talked about, the policy springs. That if you wanted to, um, you know, copy, paste, and modify and whatnot for your own governments, um, the make zine things, the hackster links, um, all that stuff is up here now. Oh, certification, very important one, of course. So go for it. I will hold on to the slide for five more minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. If you didn't get a picture of this and you really wanted a picture of this, I think we can probably easily share this with everybody. And my last slide is just thank you. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out. Um, we're going to have an awesome day tomorrow, and Lee is going to tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you. Uh, just a quick few notes uh, for tomorrow. Um, I am really excited for you all to join us at Les Bass Maker. Uh, if you haven't been there before, it's a super cool maker space uh, in Hochelaga. And um, yeah, they're hosting us, they're a venue sponsor, and it's gonna be really awesome. We have a whole day of, uh, of workshops, so if you haven't signed up, there are still a few workshops that have spots left, by the way, but um, if you haven't signed up for a workshop as well, we do have unconference sessions running all day, so if you saw the blackboard with all the post-its on it, if you just wanna like vote for those topics and me and Sid are gonna make it into a schedule, um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. We also just have like some, spaces for people to chill out and keep hacking on your badges and uh yeah so like there's like a full day of discussions and also workshops and hanging out so uh yeah hope to see you guys tomorrow and also tonight uh there is a after party uh starting at 8 p.m at north star bar on saint laurent uh they have pinball machines it's gonna be really fun um and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. And also I'm like really, really happy to see so many people who it's their first time at uh, Open Hardware Summit. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>